I'm spilling my glitter. <laughs> Welcome to Princess Petals and Fairy Dust Florals. <sighs> oh, I can't even see the top of my head. What's going on with this thing? <clears throat> Okay. Can you hear the neighbor's dog? Those are yappers. Hey y'all! Today we're going to be doing composite bouquets. Composite means made of many parts. The flower of a composite is actually not just one flower, but it's made of hundreds of flowers called flower heads. So this is a rose composite. The technical definition for this one is actually a Dutch's rose. Um, so we are going to be doing some like this, but we're also going to do some with some peonies that I have. But uh, stay tuned and I'm going to show you the entire process. The AIFD or the American Institute of Floral Design defines a composite bouquet as a bouquet in which the focal area is constructed with a composite flower such as uh, glomilia. Did I say that right? Glomilia. Glomil gl gl anyway, uh, the glomilia is a composite flower. I'm going to read this. I've made a couple, but a glomilia is a composite flower constructed from gladiola florets that resembles a large camellia blossom. So I'm gonna scroll a couple of pictures of uh, glomillias across the screen next so you can actually see what that is. And then I'm gonna also put up a couple of different um, flowers that you can also do uh, composite arrangements with. And you can use just about any bloom to do a composite flower bouquet with. It is time consuming, but the end result is just this really brilliant um, flower. It looks larger than what your average bloom would be. So So it's really cool and somewhere that you would see a composite flower would be more like a, a corsage. I've seen women wear them as corsages. They're very large for a corsage, but also um, for bridal, bouquet, bridal bouquets. So this is what they're mainly used for, bridal bouquets or for corsages. So we're gonna get started. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, create your base and it's very simple. What you're gonna wanna do is take a piece of cardboard. This just uh, sawed off the flaps of a box. And then you are going to take a bowl or something and trace it. So I've already traced this one out. Then once you trace it out, I've got a couple of bigger ones that I'm going to use today. Um, so this is a bigger one. Then you're going to want to cut out a hole, maybe about the size of a quarter or a 50 cent piece out of the center. If you're using a smaller one, like I did with this one, it's going to be probably about the size of a nickel or quarter. Um, but you'll definitely need a hole in the center. So once you do that, then you are going to take your... Uh, satin ribbon. I like to use double face satin, but you can actually use any satin, acetate, ribbon, any of it. You'll just want to make sure the shiny side is face up and the non-shiny side is going to be glued and attached onto here. If you have your glue pan, switch that on so we can get started with that. If you're using a glue gun, absolutely, you can use that too. My glue pan that I ordered, uh, What's going on with my craziness here? My um, glue pan that I ordered, the latch on it wouldn't latch. So I have sent that bad boy back. So I'm having to use a glue gun, which uh, anybody in the floral industry knows that a glue gun is very slow. It's not... Um, it's not time conductive or conducive 
listen to my language there. It's not time conducive um, because when you're working in a florist, you're working very quickly doing mass production. And so um, a glue gun just takes so much more time. So maybe in the next few videos, I will have my glue pan back and set up. Um, so first things first, you're gonna wanna get your glue gun started. But here, we're gonna take a little bit of glue and start it there. And since this is such a bigger disc than this one, I'm definitely gonna use a lot more ribbon. So I'm gonna take off probably about three yards here. And I mean, if you run short, you, you can always add more ribbon. I'm gonna clip it here. And then you just wanna start fishing it through. And I like to take mine, I'm trying to hold it up because my last couple of videos, I face the camera down and people were like, um, you know, we really wanna see your face. We prefer not to see your boobs. So I'm trying to work up here, but I'll still have to move the camera down. So here we go. But I like to give it a little bit of glue through here. I might have to put my glasses on because I'm half blind. I'm a blind old lady. So, I like to pull it tight just because it looks um, neater when it's pulled taut and then you're gonna want to go all the way around here put on my glasses so I can work quickly and see what I'm doing Okay, so we have finished uh, covering this entire disc with the double faced satin, and next we are going to disassemble uh, our peonies. And I'm using silk for this for these, but you can always use fresh, um, and you just follow the same process and method uh, when you are doing fresh. So I'm gonna put this on high speed and clip right through it. Okay, so now I have my petals disassembled from, I'm gonna keep one intact, and then all my other ones, I'm cutting my petals. Either I'm leaving them in like little two pieces or I'm completely cutting it so it's a single petal. And then I'm gonna fast forward it uh, so you can see uh, everything as I assemble the petals onto my disc. So if I had my glue pan, I would just simply dip glue in and then stick it down, but since I don't have my glue pan, I'm gonna have to do it the uh, old fashioned slow way. And of course, if you don't have a glue pan, this way works perfectly fine. But you'll wanna put glue on the edge, and then you're gonna want to, you can see, I'm gonna want to So it's just about that much, about that much over the edge.
So here we have all the petals have been glued on. And how you saw, I kept just turning it, gluing a petal on, turning it, gluing a petal on. So I just have the layers and layers of petals. And now you just kind of want to go through and take off all your glue strings. And you're going to get those whether you use a glue gun or a glue pan. Uh, the process would have definitely gone a little faster with my glue pan um, just because uh, with a glue gun, you've got to glue, set the glue gun down. Anyway, it's a little crazy. So then uh, you're going to take your stem, your last stem of pennies. And I do not like that it's a tiny little stem. I cut it too short. So I am just going to pop that out, pull all the leaves off of this, pop that stem right into there. But I still, I don't think I want all these little um, silk green ring. So I'm gonna snip, snip them right on off. And you can leave them on if you like. I am just not wanting them on for this, okay. All right, and there you go. Just really clean lines at the bottom there. And actually, you know what? If I if that wasn't secure, and sometimes when you disassemble flowers, it's not secure, so you might wanna just stick a little bit of glue in there before you shove the uh, stem back in there. And then you're just gonna take this, slide it right into the middle, and there you go. Uh, composite penny okay but now I just need to secure that down in there so I'm gonna do that and you basically do that exact same way you're just gonna glue it down and then I'm gonna show you how to add stems so uh, you've got stem at the bottom of your bouquet Okay, so here I am getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoops, drop one. Uh, these are um, just, they're already covered wires. This is probably a 16 or 18 gauge. So just remember the lower the gauge, the thicker the wire. So um, this is one of the thicker ones. And I'm going to just take these. And oops, I'm going to floral tape them all together. So this is going to be my stems. I'm just going to have one stem comes up. I'm actually going to cover this with satin also. And when you're using the floral tape, you want to remember that it's just like electrical tape. You want to pull it taut, and then it gets gummy and sticky. What is hot in here? I gotta turn on my fan. Hold on. Alrighty. So now I'm going back in, and I am gluing leaves around here just because I don't like how um, this is not uh, like really, see how it's a little flimsy? I don't like that. I like whenever I'm doing um, construction of any kind of silk or fresh flowers, I like for it to be very sturdy and um, like almost like a, a baseball bat you could use it for because I do not want anything falling apart on the day of. Um, so your mechanics and your construction are really important. Um, so I am just going back in. And I mean, you could leave this uh, if it was 100% secure. I just don't like how that is wobbling like that. So I'm gonna construct it more so it is not like that. 
I want it to be just very firm and hard. So I'm gonna uh, go in and secure it up and you'll be able to see that in a few minutes. So speed forward. And that is very secure. Whack! Could definitely hit somebody with a baseball bat with this thing. Okay, so next I want to go in and I just want to cover this whole stem with um, my ivory ribbon because I think it's going to look way better. So, fast forward. Um, I'm taking this little tiny piece. I'm going to Put a little bit of glue. Can we close the door? Then what I'm gonna do, because I don't want this stem to be showing on the bottom. I'm gonna cover it. It's gonna be covered on the end. I don't know if you can see that. Once I wrap the whole stem. All right. And then, we are going to put a little glue up here, right at the base. And we're just going to start wrapping it all the way around, down to the bottom. Fast forward. <laughs> okay, apparently I was going on and on and it wasn't even recording. My daughter's in here making fun of me. All right, so now, I know I say so a lot, but whatever. Just kidding. All right. So we want to see, we, I've clipped the ends of it, and now um, we don't want to just cut it because then it's going to look frayed on the ends, the ribbon. So what I like to do is I like to hit it, the end of it, with a little bit of glue, just a little string of glue. And then I like to take it and do a little fold. That is our dog candy. She drives me that shit crazy. Then once I fold that, I don't know if you can see it up there, then I'm going to go ahead and glue it. And then it's just a really nice crease or fold, a clean fold um, on the end of it. And I'm just going to hit it with the glue. You hear that dog? She's just done growling at the neighbors. Crazy. Crazy dog. Crazy dog. There we go. It's almost like an umbrella. It's so big. So there we go. And then, of course, you want to go through, get all your little glue strings off. If there's any little pieces that need to be glued, go ahead and glue them. I definitely want a little piece of glue there. Yeah, and I'm glad I did that because it is definitely more secure now. It's not wobbly. Um, and I could have gone all the way across with leaves. I don't have to keep the um, the ivory. Uh, I am gonna keep it on this. I have done ones where it's completely leaves all the way across. It, you know, just gives it a different look, a different effect. So, um, and next I, you can leave it like this, but I am going to do like a little crisscross ballerina ribbon on here. So let me go find that ribbon and I'll be right back. 
So the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to do, I've heard it called two different things. I've heard it called French knotting and I've also heard it called ballerina wrap. And it's basically just crisscrossing the ribbon back and forth and it just looks makes it look uh, a whole lot more elegant. So I'm going to speed right through that and show you all how to do that. So what I'm doing here is I've crisscrossed it. Once I crisscross it, I'm pulling it tight and then I'm going to twist it over top of itself. And then I'm going to repeat and do that exact same thing in the back. So I have just finished doing the little French knotting all the way across and I did like a little shoestring bow down at the bottom. Now I think I am going to leave the, you know, a little bit of um, um, streamers, but I'm just going to do a little just straight across. I'm not going to do anything fancy with that. And then I found, this was a bracelet. I found it at Hobby Lobby. Shout out to Hobby Lobby. Whoop, whoop. It was $6.99, which it's a cheap little bracelet. But I like the little bedazzles here because I love sparkles. So I am going in and um, clipping them apart because I'm going to use these little things right there, each little square. And I'm going to glue it right onto each little knot just to make it fancy. So, anyway, and make it bedazzle because I love some bedazzle. And brides like to have a little sparkle, unless they're definitely not a sparkle bride. But anyway, I'm going to speed it up and you can watch me do that. And there we are finished with our composite bouquet with all the little sparkle bedazzles on it. Pull off all the little glue strings and we are good to go. I will say Constructing something like this is very time consuming. So if you're in the floral industry and you are doing this for a client, you are definitely going to want to make sure you charge appropriately for your time that you have um, invested into doing this because it takes a lot of time to um, first to clip all the uh, roses apart, whether they're silk or fresh, um, and then gluing each and every one down uh, doing the um, French knotting, ballerina wrap, or you know, putting little bedazzle sparkles on it. So you wanna make sure that you are charging accordingly. Um, make sure you charge what you're worth, and you are worth a lot. Sparkle on! Sparkle on! Let me try that again. Welcome to Prince's Petals and Fairy Dust Florals. 